Someone else, maybe. Um, we've got some Strongbow Cup, so if we do win it, we've got ourselves a couple of pint glasses there. Look at them there, they're beautiful. Might try and swipe them. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to another one of my vlogs. What are we up to today? Well, we've got quite a lot on. It's the middle of July, so we're a couple of weeks away from our impending uh, moving date, the new pitch. Um, but uh, yeah, we're not quite there yet, but we are managing to get some stuff on there now, sort of managing to store stuff up. We're getting to the process now, imminently getting on there and setting the place up and getting the keys, which will be on August the 4th. Uh, I can't wait for that day because the last two months of me waiting around has been frustrating to say the least. But anyway, we're nearly there. But I've still got lots to do. I've got lots of cars I need to prep, lots of things I need to pick up, lots of stuff I need to sort out. So today we're going to be looking at a couple of cars, well, for more than a couple of cars, a few cars that I've had in. I'll quickly show you around them as we go. Uh, I've got to get a car to the Valeters. I'm going to go nip down there. I've also got to show you one of my uh, new tools I've got. Uh, this is something a bit different this time, guys, uh, but something I thought actually will be useful, uh, as I'll explain to you in a bit. We also need to pick some parts up. I've got to get a uh, gearbox picked up that I've got for a Fiat Panda, wiper motor units for a Renault Scenic. We also need to go and collect the signs. So I've got my new signs I've had made from the printers. So we're going to have to go and sort that out. Um, we need to pick a car up in order to pick all these bits up because they're not going to fit in my car. The boot's a little bit uh, restricted being a saloon. So we need to uh, get a Mondeo picked up. I've got a Mondeo, um, which is actually at my new premises which are going to go on sale it's full of diesel which is ideal and it's got a big boot so we can use that today as our little bit of a workhorse uh, and no doubt there'll be other things as well we need to sort out oh we also need to collect some more cars as well i've got some vehicles at a farm i'm storing there uh, the farmer's actually sold his premises he wants them out so i've got to go pick, pick them up and get them shifted so we're going to uh, get a bit of help later on uh, get them cars off the farm so let me show you first what we're up to today. We're going to be taking this little Chevrolet. I'm going to show you this now. The weather is absolutely horrendous today. Uh, it can't make its mind up whether it's raining or sunny. It's spitted at the moment, so I'll, uh, I'll brave it for you. But we just had a downpour. So this here is a Chevrolet Cruze, which effectively is an Astra J. Now, those of you who are eager-eyed might recognise this car. It was on an auction video about maybe about six weeks ago. Uh, we bought it from Aston Barkley Prees. I had a bit of a bumper day that day. I think I bought about four, car, five cars on that sale, and this was one of them. Uh, it's a 12 plate, like I said. It's basically an Astra J, so like an Astra J of sort of 2009 onwards. Uh, this is a rebadge version called the Chevrolet Cruze. We made these in saloons and hatchbacks. This is a hatchbacks version. It's a 1.8 petrol. Um, we didn't give a lot for this. I think. I, I mean, really, I think it was about 1,250 quidish mark. I'll put the exact figure down below what it cost me. Uh, the rain is about to come down heavy by the sounds of it, but I shall carry on. Uh, it needs a wash, so the rain will help that. It's uh, filthy dirty, it's been laid up basically at a storage site and it's just covered in dust and crap. I mean, you can just see it all here, it's horrible. So it needs a valet. Um, but that aside, uh, it's not a bad car. Underneath all the crap and the shit, it's decent. Wheels want to clean, the whole body wants to clean, he wants a polish and a bit of a buff up. The interior wants to clean, but it will make a car. On a 12 plate, it's not a bad thing to be honest with you. Uh, I've started doing some little running repairs on it. Uh, you can see inside here, it is horrible. This is why it's going to go the valet is today. It wants a deep clean of the seats and the carpets. But everything's there, everything's right. It will make a car. The 110 foul, it's a bit on the higher side. But there's still money in it, I believe. I think it's probably a 24.95 car from what I've looked on online. So it just needs that little bit of fettling here and there just to get it sort of right again. And I have started some repairs on it. Um, little bits and bobs that I've sort of noticed, like this armrest here, all horrible and faded. I was looking at maybe trying to get one used off eBay, what a pain in the arse that was. Um, literally no one's got any, they're obviously a bit, ob they're a bit obscure these things. A lot of Astra bits on them, but that isn't one of them. Uh, that is unique to this, but I did manage to find one in the end. I actually got one from China, would you believe? A company sent me out this replacement bit. 17 quid that was delivered from china uh, and just literally just fit straight on so we're going to put that on in a bit little bits like that just sort of tidy it up because it looks a bit scruffy that does otherwise um also we had to fix the oil cooler on it so for those of you when i bought this car it stunk of oil and um basically what they do on these on these uh, engines these Vauxhall derived engines in these which is what this has got in it it's a Vauxhall engine I'll show you now we'll get the bonnet up there we go is the oil filter housing which is just there um, to the left of that is an oil cooler which is behind this exhaust system here, the manifold. And the oil coolers basically just leak. They leak oil out, out the cooler, drip down onto the exhaust there, uh, and basically just make a rook of smoke and smell horrible. Very, very common on Vauxhalls. 
um, and this one was no different that it needed doing just buy the seal kit you can buy a cooler replace the whole lot the whole system with the with the actual oil filter housing but i just usually just buy the the seal kit so that was about 10 quid i think it was a seal kit took it off got a guy to do it for me took it off put the new seals in uh, and uh, brought it back together we serviced it as well with an oil change on it oil's like brand new in it it's like you can barely see the reading on the dipstick i hope it's that clear which is good it's been well looked after and serviced but at least that's a good point to it but it's done um i wish he'd just cleaned it off a little bit with a bit of brake cleaning because he he did he did leave a bit of residue on there uh, and it's been smoking a little bit since but that's purely because it's just the old oil that just soaked into the exhaust very porous it's this difficult to burn it off but anyway it's slowly now we're using it burning it all off um, but I might just get it in the workshop when I get in there, new precite and just double check it. Plus it's got a little blown exhaust on the front flex, it's probably going to have to take that off anyway, so we'll deal with that. But the point is, we're getting there. Um, shut that down properly. Mirrors as well, those of you who remember, the mirrors were all, all falling off paint was it was all patchy and horrible. Managed to sort them out, just got a flick can of sort of like some Plastec, it's like a, almost you put on bumpers and stuff, it's like a textured orangey peel effect, paint, goes on quite thick, just redid both sides, just to smart them up really, um, like I said, I've just had a quick go over myself, I mean they're not 100% perfect, but they're better than they were, I should show you the rest of the car, it's not that bad actually, I mean, it just wants to clean, it's just one of those cars that just looks really dirty and horrible, but underneath it, it will make a car. It's mechanically drives absolutely superb. It just wants a little bit of love and TLC to make it a proper retailable car again. You know, it's just like no one's bothered washing it in years. No one's bothered with the brakes. No one's bothered cleaning the wheels. It's just been neglected and then just dumped in the auction and the pie exchanged in. And you just need someone like me just to rectify it, give it a new lease of life, sell it on to someone else who can enjoy it. And I think they offer superb value for money. For $24.95 a 12 plate car, I think it's i think it offers good value and they don't drive that bad either because obviously it's a voxel drive platform it's all right and it's a little bit different as well and sometimes it's nice to have something just a little bit different as long as it isn't too obscure and you can't get bits for it so we need to get cracking on with the day but i've got a dilemma and a dilemma that i've now think i've resolved you see at the moment i'm pretty much on my own i can get a little bit of help now and then i've got a relative who comes and helps me um, but until we actually get in the premises and set back up and get a member of staff in there working full time it's moving stuff about moving stuff about in the moment is a little bit tricky um and like today for example i've got to take this to the valeters get it down to the valeters and then i've got to get back to the valeters and i'm only going about a mile down the road to where another car is that i can pick up and then carry on with my day but I need to get there. Now I could just walk, which today, like the day with rain, it's probably not ideal. Um, but also it's just the rush, you know, it's not, it takes 20 minutes, half an hour of your day, walking through town centres just to get from one end of the town to the other to get to the neck where I need to be. And I thought about this going forward thinking, I'm gonna be doing this a lot, going to the body shops, going to mechanics locally, going to the valeters, all within a very short distance really of where I'm gonna be based. And effectively I'm gonna be relying on other people to either pick me up or member of staff, I'm gonna to have to take them off a job and take them out in order for me to bring me back it's just a lot of fannying about and you also get let down a lot by people as well and it takes basically to take an age however i think i may have resolved this problem and let me just show you what i mean Ta -da! and i give you the answer to my problems this from dyu electric bike company they've got a uk-based warehouse and they sell basically electric bikes from small mini bikes like this all the way up to your big bikes city bikes etc your fat tire bikes they do the whole range like i said have a look for the website you can see a whole range of what they do um they've got some fantastic offers and promos on as well which i'll talk to you about in a minute but dyu they sell electric bikes worldwide and the quality of them actually guys and the value is, is actually extraordinary now hear me out on this why i've got it you see what i'm going to do with this is if i take this to the valors this this is folds down by the way this is a proper folding bike i'll show you in a minute what i mean um i can fold it away put it in the back of a car go to the valors go to the paint shop go wherever i'm going reassemble it and then just use the bike now it's now it's an electric bike which suits me down to the ground because i'm not really built for exercise i'll be honest with you um it does 15 and a half miles an hour it will do 30 to 37 miles on a single charge range obviously weight depending so if you're like me and 40 and a half stone it's probably going to be on the lesser of that that sort of scale but if you're a bit less, a bit more fly, a bit more flight, you'll probably do a bit more. Um, but I'm only going to be doing sort of a couple of mile journeys at a time, if that, maybe even a mile. So it's ideal for me. It's never going to run out of charge. 
I say it's pedal assist anyway, so if you want to, you can pedal. You don't have to use the sort of fully pedal electric mode, which is just turn the throttle away you go. You can pedal if you want to, a bit of exercise, you know what I mean? Uh, and obviously, if you use the pedals, it's assistance, so it's losing less charge. And if you're new to use the uh, electric power, you can just turn the throttle and away you go. Ideal. It's got front and back rear brakes. It's fully foldable, so it's really convenient, really light. I think it only weighs about 15, 18 kilos, something like that. It's really light. And like I said, it's just ideal for what I'm going to need going forward. Okay, so let me show you how to disassemble it. Um, we we'll try and do this with one hand, which is a little bit difficult, but we'll have a go. So first of all, the pedals, they, they basically can be contracted inwards, so you can just literally just turn these like that. You can turn them however you want it, so you can lift them up. And there you go, put your pedals in like that. So that's really snug. So that makes it nice and slim line. It just basically it's quick release seat. So you can literally just take that seat out if you wanted to, just pull that up and it'll come out. Or you just, just do it like that and drop it down, make it more compact. It pivots in here on the handlebars. So we pull this down here now, this will pivot. We pull that down there and then we can actually release the handle completely out. It's on a braided wire anyway, which protects all the wiring. The clasp on this here, this little protective clasp here, stops it from pivoting. Like I said, it's hinged here. So we'll just lift that up, pull that, and now that bike will fold in two. So I'll just stick the camera down and just uh, show you how easy it is to fold and put it into the back of the car. Like I said, just fold it inwards. Shove that there, everyone. And there you go. Done. How compact is that? I mean, that's probably smaller than a wheelchair. And I've got this little strap here comes with it. And all you got to do with that is just stick it to the old uh, spokes of the wheels around there. And it just stops it pulling back on itself. Because obviously it's hinged, it's trying to pull itself back. And then just pick it up, chuck it in boot. Job done. So like I said, dead easy to use, really compact. They've got a massive range of bikes as well, as I've already mentioned. So check them out, DYU Cycles. The link is in the description. Like I said, we've got a promo code in there. And also on their bikes, they get one year warranty as standard. They've got on-call support, so you're not messing about and send messages like on eBay and wait for someone to reply. Literally, you can get hold of them straight away. And you've got 14 day money back guarantee as well. So if you buy it, don't like it, send it back 14 days, they'll give you money back, no quibble. So you've got really nothing to lose if you don't like it. This really quick delivery, mine came in a few days, well packaged, good product. I've used it a few times now, it seems to be working perfectly fine. And it's definitely something that I'm gonna be using a lot going forward. You're gonna see a lot on the channel. And it's just gonna make my life so much easier. So if you're interested in electric bike guys, looking for something like this, doesn't have to be a folding bike, they've got loads of range. Just check them out guys, DYU Cycles. Link is in the description. Get yourself on their website and give them a check out. Right. Place are on, let's get ourselves on the road. Never in doubt, fired into life. Okay, so we're gonna go off now to the Valeters. Now I've got a Valet I've been using recently and they've been okay, to be fair, very good value. Um, particularly on the mini Valets, stuff like that, the trade Valets we call them. We took that Astra H there in my last vlog, did a good job of it, 15 quid, wash and shampoo the car, dress the tires, do the windows quickly, quick wipe of the dash and doors, nothing major, but just a, just a general wipe down and give it a hoover out. You can't really moan at that. Uh, and the full valet is decent as well, 50 quid for a full valet and the shampoo all the seats, you know, go, go to town on it. But the last one I took there was a Focus, which you probably haven't seen on the channel. We did buy it in the auction a few months ago, an estate one, I'll try and find the, the, the video of it, of the, so you can see what, what it was like when we bought it in the auction. But it was filthy inside. I took it there and they did a good job of it, in fairness, internally. It's just, it was really soggy afterwards. They like they'd really gone to town on the seats, not dried it properly, and it just, Caused, it just took it forever to dry, so was, they put me off a little bit, to be honest with you. And I've been recommended to another Valeter, who are trade friends of mine use, and they're probably about similar price, maybe a tenner dearer, which I'm not really fussed about 10 quid, but they'll also give the car a bit of a polish as well, and apparently the quality of the uh, the workmanship is just a bit bare. So we'll uh, go and see them. I've never dealt with them before, uh, so I'll go introduce myself, use one of my friends as a recommendation, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, get us in there, because um, they do get quite busy. And if we can get this dropped off there, that'd be great. And get the bike set up and get out of here and crack on with the rest of the day. If not, we'll have to go to the other valeters who I know will definitely take the car off me, no problem. Noisy road sweeper here. But 
ideally we can go to this other valeters it'd be better because i just want it done right from the valeters we'll jump on the bike ride back pick up the mondeu which i've got at my new pitch which i've just dropped off the other day uh, i'm not going to show you around the pitch guys I'm sorry because i'm keeping that all under my hat until i open but we'll just get that mondeu we might do a walk round of it somewhere else i'll show you around the car uh we're going to use that car and then going to use that car then today to go and pick up a gearbox and some other bits drop them back off and then pick up some signs as well for the new business hopefully the new signs will fit in the back of this mondingo and then day's not finished we've got to get itself back down to uh, Winsford where my old premises were to a farm around the corner where I've got some cars stored get them picked up off site because the farmer's losing his shit so let's get ourselves down to the valleters right we've got the um, car dropped off at the valleters the place I wanted to get it at as well um, I think they were quite glad to see me actually because they weren't that busy which is, um, which is great so I've got to manage to get in so we'll have a look at the cars like later when we pick it up hoping it's going to be nice and spanking i've been recommended here and to be honest with you it seemed a nice plug so 50 quid for a trade valet full hit in and out i'm not complaining so we'll see what it's like when we get it picked up and hopefully that car will look nice then because he deserves it because underneath all that crap it is just it is a nice car because i remember it from the auction it was a decent looking thing uh, but just wanted the interior doing really i've um was going to film me riding this bike and have a chat with you on the way back it's only about half a mile away but I've decided uh, not to on the basis that the microphones that I've got my clip on mics aren't working properly. I bought some cheap nasty mics rather than the proper Rodo ones which you're supposed to buy. And it's just basically they're, they're a piece of tap I bought off eBay. I think they're off wish.com really. I think that that's the sort of that's the sort of standard they are. So they're going they're going in the bin and we get ourselves some proper clip on mics because because otherwise you want, because basically if I trash try and use the GoPro you won't be able to hear me. So anyway, let's get off now, uh, get back to that, get to the new site, pick them on day up and crack on with the day. Right, Monday was picked up. We've got out of the rat race. Um, bikes in the boot, folded away. Drive back was very pleasant, actually. The ride, sorry, ride back was very pleasant, not drive. I'll get a load of comments otherwise. You don't drive a bike, you ride a bike. And you're very true. Oh, bad little drive back, to be fair. I think I need to put a bit of air in this back tyre. Um, I've not checked that. I think uh, my weight, obviously, is having a bit of a bearing on it because it was a little bit slippy in uh, a few places, but I enjoyed it, actually. Uh, dead easy, just like you say. That took me five minutes to get back on that, whereas it would have been a 20-minute walk. So, pleased with that. So here's the old Monday we got from the auction the other week. Uh, we bought this with a little Daisy Sandero. Absolute peach, this is. Absolute peach. It drives so well. Um, like I said, we're going to go to uh, Winsford now, my old garage, and, and then uh, pick up some bits there. But I just thought I'd quickly show you this, because it is fantastic. It's in lovely clean condition. Other than his which he wants a quick Uber out, it literally just wants to put a price in the window. It's that good. It's just a nice, nice, pleasant car. And it's so rare to get something like this at the moment. Put your trade plate on the back. I've got to put trade plate on. Uh, it's so rare at the moment to um, get something where you don't really need to do anything mechanically to it. I think I've driven it the other day back. It drove well. I've just driven it from the other side of crew to halfway to Winston, where we are now. And it's faultless, no knocks, no bangs, nothing. It starts on the button. It's full of diesel as well, full of diesel, 182 miles in it. So that's good. Um, like I said it's it just a nice thing and lovely inside as well. You know, it's not a top spec or anything like that. It's got lecky windows, got air con, usual things you want, you know, touch control crews, all that. But it's not a titanium or anything like that, but it, it, it'll do, it'll do. And it's really clean. And to me, two litre diesel, best engine. He doesn't want any paint. It's screaming out, 1995, 2195. I think we gave, I think it was about 950, maybe a grand out the door with the fees. I'll put down in the comment, I'll put down here what the actual price was with the fees. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was no more than a grand, certainly. Uh, but what a bargain. I do like a Mondeo, particularly this two litre model he made, because you can get these, there's three different engines they did. One six, one eight, two litre in the diesels. Did they do a two two as well in this shape? I can't remember if they did or not. I think they may have done. Um, but the ones you'll find the most common are the two litres, one eights and one sixes. The two litre is by far the one you want. 
I've seen these with 300,000 miles on, still going strong, taxi lads and stuff like that. Just service them, now and then, that's all they ask for. They're really, really decent. You've got the 1.6, which is got on the low power side. It's pretty good on fuel, in fairness to it, and it's okay performance, it's not sluggish, um, but it's not as reliable as a two litre. The one you avoid is the 1.8. Now, the 1.8 diesel and Ford engines have been around for about 30 odd years, if not 40 years. In fact, I think they were in the late 80s, early 90s, they went from 1.6 diesel, which wouldn't pull the skin off custard, to 1.8, old Endura D engines used to call them, and they were fantastic. Until about 2007, 8, and they changed them from the old style engine, which is turbocharged, very basic, uh, to a common rail engine with wet belts and stuff like that. Oh my word, they just became awful. And that wet belt system, I mean, any car that's got a wet belt on it is just a disaster to stay well away from. I have not seen a car yet that has a wet belt system on it that actually operates properly and doesn't just blow up. Uh, and the 1.8 diesel Mondeo engine is also in the Focus as well, there's no exception. Um, it was 2007, 8 onwards, just, you know, I just avoid it personally. Or if you are going to buy one, make sure the belt's been done and make sure it's been done properly. And when I mean properly, I don't just mean having a new belt fitted. It needs to have the sump off, it needs to be cleaned out, you need to make sure there's no bits of rubber and belt all left get left in the oil, in the pad itself, gets into the oil pump. They're a big job to do. Um, and this is why I just don't really buy them if I can help it. And I'm not saying I wouldn't take one in part X, I'm not saying I would buy one if it was really cheap. But it's not something I go looking for. Buy the two litre. If you can grab the two litre, it will it will give you years of good service in. They drive really well as well. I can't really fault them on day Fair enough, they're not gonna be as drive nice as maybe as a Passat. I think the Passat drives a little bit better. But they're not a bad car, and I'd probably say it would be a bit more reliable than a Volkswagen. Because some German cars, regardless of what you think, are not as reliable as they make out. There's literally no noise on it at all. It is as sweet as a nut. And when this was in the auction, I didn't really pay much attention to it. And then I saw it, it was sort of buried in a, in a big block of cars. And a ruck of traders were around it, looking at it. Oh, text message. Including some guys who wouldn't really buy this sort of stuff. I mean, they wouldn't buy it. It's too old for them, too many miles. But even they were looking at it and going, oh, what a clean old thing that was. So I sort of went and looked around it myself and thought, you know what, if it's cheap, we'll have a go. We'll try and buy it. Um, but I suspected, actually, because of the interest, that someone might put their hand up who might usually not buy this sort of thing and have a go. You get the odd trader now and then who buys the, not selling the sort of stuff that I usually sell, sort of sub three grand stuff. They're dealing in sort of five or 10 or 20 grand cars. And occasionally they'll go and buy and real cheapy. Um, they usually regret it because they realize why they don't buy cheapest in the first place. But they'll buy it on the basis, oh, a little, a little cheapy for the corner, stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they, so I was expecting it to be bought by someone else and to be a bit of a competition for it. There wasn't really, it was a few heads who, who put their hands up. I think we won this for about 8, 850 quid, put the fees on it, like I say, it was around a grand. So I was really chuffed with it. Anyhow, I've got to go to Winsford now to my old garage. We've got to get some cars moved off site, get them into storage somewhere else. I'm probably just going to take them directly to my new pitch, to be honest, because we've got a few spaces there. So I'll take them there. Uh, and then I've got to get them signed, we'll get them later on today. Got to pick that set, uh, got to pick the Chevrolet up last thing as well from the Valeters. But I've got to go get a gearbox for a Fiat Panda uh, and a uh, Renault Scenic, uh, some wiper motors as well. Now I'm actually meeting the guy, I was supposed to meet in the middle of nowhere, but now I'm actually meeting him at my old premises. He's gone to Winsford, dropping off some wood bits. He's a breaker friend of mine, he breaks a lot of cars. And he's got just what I needed. I bought a Fiat Panda in part exchange from a dealer at 1.1, old 2006, I think it was, in Man City Blue. Uh, and, it's in that, and it's not a bad old thing, to be honest with you, but I didn't give a lot for it. I went out, test drove it, they had an idea they had a wanting 500 quid for it, which if it was half right, I would have paid, to be fair, because it, to me, it sounded like a 1495, 1595 car. I think you did about 100,000 miles, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was diff it was still retailable for a cheapie. It was a 1.1 petrol, looked all right, it was pretty clean on the body, it didn't need any paint or anything. It looked a nice, presentable old little Panda. And the Pandas do sell well, regardless of what people say about Fiat's, Fine, if you, don't, if you think they're all fixed again tomorrow and all that rubbish, do it. Don't buy them then. But I make money out of them and sell them all the time and never have any issues. So I'll just keep buying and selling them. And they're actually a decent car to drive. So it's definitely something that I wanted. But when I test drove it, I was a little bit disappointed because the car had a bit of a misfire, uh, which I wasn't too concerned about because it's quite easy to fix. But it did have a misfire. The clutch was dead high and starting slipping. And also the gearbox was whining its brains out. Do you know what? I put a bid in anyway. I always like to put bids in, even if it's an under offer. Just to just, oh, no, I've put a bid in. You know, I'm, I'm making an effort. 
you've got to take the rough with the smooth, as I've mentioned before. Put a bit in at 300 quid, they undered hard a little bit, but eventually they accept my offer. Because of that sort of money, I thought, well, I can go away, have a think about it. If it's no good, I can probably trade it on to someone else for 50 quid wages anyway. Or if worst case, we'll scrap it and probably lose a little bit of money. But I thought, but anyhow, the, what the concern me was the gearbox. The reason being is that Fiat's do suffer with gearbox problems. It's not that common, but if you're trading and buying and selling them, you will come across it. And it goes not only to the Fiat Puntos as well, Lake Pandas, and also uh, Fiat 500s. And the problem is, like I found out with a Punto that I've got currently, which I did a video on a few months ago, when you need a gearbox for one, trying to get hold of one is really difficult. I thought it'd be quite easy to get hold of them because I've bought them before, years gone by for the Mark II Puntos and stuff like that, and they were really cheap. No, not these ones. The Lake Boxes and the Puntos, Grande Punto, toes and the 500s they are like literally three four hundred pounds per second hand box because they fit in the feet 500s and they're worth a lot more money and more desirable and a lot of traders what still got them and buying and selling them all the grande puntos and late pandas basically get stripped for all the gearboxes out of them and then people they sell them to people to traders or people online buying them to put in feet 500s because obviously they're worth more money and that is the problem that I had. So I was just thinking, well, I'm gonna have the same problem with this Panda. I'm gonna buy this Panda, I'm not gonna get a gearbox for it. So let's go away, we'll buy it in principle anyway. And if we can't sort anything out of it, then tough, we'll just sell it as it is to someone else, trade it, some, trade it on or whatever, or worst case, scrap it. Did a research on it, and it turns out these early Pandas don't have the same gearbox. They look the same, but they're not quite the same. The internals are slightly different, so they don't fit. I rang a mate of mine who breaks cars, and if I'd asked him for a Punto gearbox, a late one for a 500, he'd have laughed at me and said, oh, I haven't got any in, you know I don't have any in. And if I did, it'd be three, 400 quid. And when I told him I got a 1-1 Panda and it's an early one, he went, ah, oh, these aren't the same. These are different. So he confirmed my suspicion. Um, and anyway, it turns out he's got a gearbox there. He's actually got two or three of them. Can't get rid of them. No one wants them, because they're only for early Pandas. Uh, and it was uh, 70 quid. So, 70 pound for a gearbox that's only done 18,000 miles. He took it out of a car that an old lady had and they just smashed up and he bought. So, I'm over the moon of it. 70 quid for a gearbox that's done 18K. The numbers are in our favour. So, even put a clutch in it, which costs about 50 quid for a clutch kit, whack it in, gearbox. The car's already starting to sound very, very cheap. A little bit of work involved, but it's not a disaster putting a gearbox and a clutch in a panda. It's pretty straightforward. So the numbers are working in far favour because they only give 300 quid for the Panda. Gearbox, clutch, wants an exhaust on it, a few little bits like that. It's probably not even going to owe us 700 quid this car, done. In fact, it's probably going to owe us less than that. But even at 700 quid, we're more than doubling the money and we're going to get a car that's going to be proper right and, I, and we can sell with confidence. And I've even got it running right now as well because I bought a core pack and set of leads for it. Now I've got a gearbox on its way. That solved that problem as well, 50 quid new plugs, new leads, two twin coils on it, and even a rocker cover gasket as well, because it was leaking a little bit. So we whacked all them on, and it's purring like a kitten. So not much else to do to it, so really pleased with that. So we get that gearbox picked up, shove it in the boot of the car, we'll take that down to a new workshop, and when we've got access to ramps, we can get that in as well. So anyway, enough of me ranting on, let's get ourselves down to the workshop, meet this guy, get these bits, and then move on to the next job. I'm getting bored now. I'm waiting round for me mate to turn up with these bits. I'm buying off him and he's just taking an age so he's uh, I've sort of moved further towards him I know where his run is he where he's on now so now at the top of the other side of Winsford which is not the best of places and he's in his van somewhere dropping bits off though so trying to hurry him up a little bit because I need to crack on with my day because I've got so much to do so Mr Boyd where are you finally he's here at bloody time too right job done we've got the swag what have we got? Well, we've got that Panda gearbox here, 1.1 gearbox. Done 15,000 miles, actually, not 17, so even less than we thought. So that was that cost us 70 quid, which I'm really chuffed with. We then got uh, these as well. These are Renault Megan, or sorry, Renault Scenic, not Megan, Renault Scenic Mark III wiper motors. Uh, there's a pair of them. They don't come as one unit, and sadly, they could, they're called Master and a Slave unit. Now, those in the know, well, it may have come across this problem racing that on the scenic freeze, the motors pack up. Basically, they leak water in them, and uh, they get in the bulkhead. They, 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 the poor design, really, and they just get water in them and just die. Uh, these are really expensive to replace. He's charged me 80 quid for this pair of them, which is immensely cheap. Um, these are about two or 300 quid usually. I mean, in fact, if you look on eBay, you'll see what I mean. I could put these on eBay now and sell them and make a profit on them, but we need them because I've got a Renault Scenic Free. 2009, they started on 09 by the way, or 59 I think they started, but mine's on a 59. 
it's a 1.5 diesel it's a nice thing once you know it's wants a little bit of fettling um it's been laid up for a while so it looks worse for wear but it will make a car and this is what's killed it not having these i'm glad i got them we've got the gearbox we've got what we need let's get ourselves back on the road crack on right okay we're, we're back on the road now i've been held up a little bit there to be fair that's put me back a little bit i've just spoken to the guy before I set off about getting the cars picked up from the farm he's now told me to come tomorrow to do that he's now going home so we've, we've, we've got to scrap that off so we're gonna get the cars out of storage from there and I was going to take them down the main pitch but we're not going to be able to do that now so we'll scrap that for tomorrow however I have just got a call from a trader now he's just rang me up to say he's got three bits in they want us to have a look at it's coming part exchange one of them have dismissed outright it was an insignia like a 16 blade insignia automatic with a knackered gearbox uh, auto box which is not something I'm going to buy one it's too new for me I don't get involved in that sort of stuff unless it was like maybe damaged or something like that or very very cheap but I mean, this will be cheap. It's got a knackered auto box, but what am I going to do with it? I've done nothing about auto boxes. The last auto box I fixed was on an old Renault Megane years ago. Um, I'm not going to get involved in trying to sort that out. So that's not for me. I want to go into an auction and get rid of. But he has got a Fiesta, and he has got a what's your car? A oh, Citroen C4 Picasso. And the Fiesta's not the best either. And I like a Fiesta. It's 14 plate, which is mm, probably a, sounds like it might be out of my price, but my pricing range. Not that I can, can't afford it, it's just it's not the sort of stuff I'd buy. But it's on 117,000 miles, so it's probably at the upper end of my budget what I would spend. But do I really want a Fiesta done 117,000 miles? That's also a one litre Eco Boom, or Eco Boost, as you're supposed to call them, but Eco Boom is the reality. Uh, it scares me that so we're going to see what it anyway and see what it's like because if it drives all right and it's priced sensibly i might buy it but if there's anything at all suspicious about it it ain't coming home with me because i just they're a bad engine they are a really bad engine in fact they're probably the most unreliable engine you can buy but i might might be able to trade it on if the numbers work so just because I'm not going to sell it to someone I know, a customer, or retail it, doesn't mean I might not sell it, sell it on to another trader. If another trader wants to have a go at trying to sell it, make money out of it, great. And if I can make a little bit of profit out of it, then fair enough. But it's highly unlikely it's going to be something that I'm going to retail. Something that I am definitely not going to retail is a Citroen C4 Picasso. This is a the shape that ran from 2007 to about 2014, I think they ran. <sighs> My word, they're bad cars. Um, they are not. If someone, asks, if someone asks me, name me a car that you will not retail. It is a Citroen C4 Picasso. I am not touching them. Not touching them at all. They're just unreliable at this age. Now, when the new four, five, six years old, even the later C4 Picassos, they're good. They're never wrong with them. They're nice things. They drive well. You'll be fine buying one. But when they start getting 10, 12, 15 years of age, they're falling to pieces. And there's a reason why you don't see many older ones around anymore. Is because they're all broke. Um, they had silly automatic boxes in them. Well, not automatic, they weren't even that. They were like a semi-automatic, so a manual clutch system with a motor that basically engaged the clutches in and out of them. They always packed up, they always were problematic, and they were a nightmare to do. And even if you put new clutches and stuff in them and set them up, you needed a master's or a doctorate to make, in order to get them working again. They were just awful things, and people didn't know how to set them up properly and calibrate them right, so you have to, you have to make sure every gear engages and set all the motors up, oh, they are awful. And not only that, they had electrical fault problems with them, handbrakes would pack up because of electric handbrakes. Just so many things that go wrong with them. Then you've got all the DPF issues because most of them were diesels and they get driven around town all the time with usually mums with five kids in the car. Uh, they, they're just doing short journeys all the time, so you have all those issues. They're just not a good car. And I would never ever look to retail one. And it's not an anti-French thing at all. French cars are actually all right, to be fair, most of them. But there is some things that you don't get involved in, and a C4 Picasso is definitely one of them. Anyway, let's get ourselves down to the dealers, go and have a look round, uh, and we'll uh, see if we end up buying any of these cars. Let's go and have a look. Right, we're at the dealers. Um, three cars we're going to look at today. I'm, I've dismissed one of them straight away, which we talked about earlier, that Insignia. I ain't interested in that, so I'll be telling that one straight. I'm not really going to buy an automatic Insignia 
especially a 16 plate one with a knackered auto box so that's off the agenda uh, but we have got this one litre fiesta little uh, eco boom engine on a 14 plate i think it's 117 foul so they've told me and then we've got a citroen picasso as well not sure if it's a grand picasso or a normal picasso we'll have to have a look so i'll um i'll go drag them out and we'll uh, go for a test drive in them and then we can weigh them up and see what offers i'm going to put in for them if any uh, i will obviously i probably will put some sort of offer in but whether or not it's a decent offer as, as in i want to buy it or if it's just an offer of appeasement just to put an offer in uh, we'll see so anyway let's get in there and see what's on offer right hold it out pulled it around the corner so you can have a proper look about uh, cars blasting past us this is the picasso it's not a grand picasso it's a standard picasso so it's a five-seater model um i don't like these i'll be honest with you never a fan of the picasso especially at this age they are usually fallen to pieces this one's pretty much on its last legs now quickly show it you it's got a little bit of a rust going on down there by the bottom of the sill it's been advised last year on the opposite side as well so we've got obviously that to contend with it's not terrible this size actually not too bad in fairness a little scuff on the mirror but you know it's it's an old car it's done about 130 40 000 miles it's a 1.6 diesel i believe uh, and it's got that horrible automatic well it's not semi-automatic really d type uh, box where it's got a manual clutch in it and then a motor that basically engages it uh yeah it's not it's not the best as we'll uh, show you in a minute but condition wise on the back it's not horrendous it's had a bit of a wallop there and it's creased the, the tailgate this side a few scuffs on the bottom bumper we've got a great big scratch on the quarter there great big scratch on the door this side's in a lot worse for wear this mirror's been whacked and then taped up and then whacked again and then the sill is on its last legs i mean that i could probably put that through it did get advised on january mot for that sill so it's probably just scraped through but uh, yeah it won't definitely want some work doing to it this is something i am definitely definitely not going to retail even before driving it you can just tell it's just not a retailable car why would you want to retail something like this with this many miles on in an auto box uh, with, a, with a, one of those horrible these horrible semi-automatic boxes in these it, you're just asking for trouble but i will put a bid in it because it's probably something that i could trade on to someone else trade a friends who will have a dabble at this sort of stuff selling stuff which is you know they're up to them what they want to do with it or potentially just put it in an auction make a bit of money out of it that way you know someone else wants to buy it i mean effectively it i mean i'll go drive it in a set but i have driven it around here it runs and drives and functions fine it's not that bad i think there's going to become an issue with the auto box eventually or the semi-auto box because it's a bit judgy when you first set off but once you go through the gears it's not that bad actually and it functions properly if someone almost wants a cheap auto you know might be able to squeeze a year or two out of it spend a bit of money on that sill next year there'll be some use to someone but it's definitely not something that i'm going to retail it's on an 09 plate it's a pointless what it's worth retail because it's not it's irrelevant because we're not going to be retailing it what's it worth for me to bid on it it's mot till january next year i think or february i'm just going to bid on 500 quid at it i think that's a fair bid to be honest uh, you could even argue slightly more than it should be paying but it is on an 09 so i expect and they probably they've probably give seven eight hundred quid for it in part x something around there maybe maybe they've got it a bit less than that maybe they might rip my hand off at 500 quid so i'm going to put the i'm going to drive this one back now i'll quickly show you what i mean about this juddering clutch when i set off i'm just going to show you inside actually sorry it's been smoked in hard and i mean hard <laughs> it's really horrible um it wants a valet even if i was going to put this in an auction i'd probably just send it away for a 15 quid valet just to get done because that is so off putting it's unreal um i mean for 15 quid i ain't even going to bother valeting it myself i'll just send it to the valeters it'll look a million dollars even just having a quick valet and then throw it in an auction or try and trade it on someone else maybe um we've got some strongbow cups so if we do win it we've got ourselves a couple of pine glasses there look at them there they're beautiful might try and swipe them but yeah it's a ropey old thing right i quickly show you what i mean about this um clutch situation we start this up now oh well we're not I'll put it in end, put it in neutral. There we go. I've noticed actually it's got it's got just under half a tank of diesel in it. So it uh, might be being used for a few days for it went to the auction if we do win it. We've got an airbag fault on as well. I'm not even gonna bother looking at that to be honest. If you just throw it in the auction as it is, if it was gonna auction it or just trade it on as it is. But basically now if I show you if I put this into auto now, let the handbrake off. Handbrake works as well, which is uh, good because they usually pack up on these. If I set off now, you'll hear it judder. Here you go. It's like a do do do, and then off it went. 
Now, when it's running and actually going along, it's fine. That initial engagement of the clutch is causing a judder. It could be all sorts of things wrong with it. It could have contamination on the clutch plate itself because it has got like a normal clutching like you get on a manual car. But then it's got like a like a, like a stepper motor here that sort of engages it in and out. So it's like I said, it's like a set. It is more semi-automatic than an automatic. But it's just so overcomplicated and they're not reliable, these clutch systems in these. Really, to rectify that, you're definitely taking it apart, putting another clutch in, finding, seeing if it's contaminated, find out why it's juddering, uh, and then put it back all together, recalibrate it. You have to set it up in each individual gear. It's an absolute faff and a nightmare. It's not something that you're going to do uh, on this sort of car, this age and mi mileage and condition. But yeah, there you go. So I say, when you set off now, lit watch, boop, 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 and we're off. <laughs> so that's not great. Anyhow, we'll go switch this back now for the Fiesta. Um, and have a look at that. Hopefully that's a bit better than this. Car number two, Ford Fiesta on a 14 plate, 117,000 miles, which is a bit high. One litre, you go boom. Now from the short journey around the corner, it seemed all right. Now I've checked on the bonnet, it's got fresh coolants there. It doesn't look that fresh or anything like that, like if someone's been topping it up. I'm gonna run it up to temperature in a minute just to make sure we haven't got any overheating problems. But as it drives, it was okay can't really fault it really it's a three-cylinder thing they're not the most finest of things they are a bit uneven and unbalanced but it was pulling fine and wasn't getting misfire or anything like that it seemed okay however would you want a retail one oh that is a scary thought if i'm honest with you but let's just show the rest of the car anyway in blue it's not a bad blue i'm not saying it's a doom blue but it's not a nice blue it's, it's an okay blue alloys are all right on it a couple of roadstone tires all around i've noticed it's pretty clean actually there's a bit of shit on there at the bottom but not any really major scratches or marks on it, I can see. Not really had much paint. Bumper there, tiny bit, maybe out of alignment, but it's not horrendous. Um, it, it's, it's just okay, really. For 14 plate, it's pretty much bang on average. It's pretty, it looks like it's got some scratches there, light marks on it, but they're probably most of them buff out, a bit of mud on it as well, which is making it look worse than it is. Uh, I've noticed a little scratch under the mirror there, which is a bit odd, like a whoosh, there. It might be able to dull that slightly, and again on the wing, the rain's adding a bit of dealer's mist. You can't see it, but I can just see it. There, very light scratch there, but it'll come out. It's not bad condition inside, facelift as well. Inside, want to valet seats are a little bit mucky, just want a full valet would sort this out. No end. We've got air con, we've got lucky front windows, you know, it's not. It ain't no top model, let's be very, let's get realistic, but it's okay, it's nice, it's pleasant. Five doors, so you're gonna buy one and sell one, you want a five door model, they're easy to sell. Again, just want to valet, buy me down windows in the back. Beautiful. What's it worth? Um, I had a look on Auto Trader, because sometimes even I have to consult the old Auto Trader. I had a rough idea, and it wasn't a million miles off. I actually thought it'd be a bit worth a bit more than I thought. I thought maybe, it's going to be 35, 3600 quid, maybe 37 a push. Um, with that mileage on it, I think it's killing it a little bit. It's more sort of around the three to 3,295 pound mark. Um, there's that on there, I can find 1.25 petrol versions, similar age, 13, 14 plates, that sort of money. And to be honest with you, you won't be buying one of them over one of these. Uh, that engine is going to be a far more reliable than this one litre Eco Boom engine. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the EcoBoost engine and the way it drives. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. We're not. When, when traders, um, when you get guys that say about the, it's a bad engine, or it's, it means it's unreliable, doesn't mean it drives bad. It, Fuel-wise, economy and the way it drives, the performance of it's very good. They're just not reliable. Um, and so it's not. So don't think it's about that they drive bad. They don't. They're actually a really good performing engine. It's just not got that reliability there. Right. So it drives fine. Um, it's got a TPS warning light on that doesn't bother me. That's pretty much it. It's pretty all right, to be fair. So I'm going to start it up now, make sure it gets up to temp. Just go for a quick drive in it, go back and make an offer. If he drives all right and I've got nothing I need to worry about, it's going to have to be somewhere around the 17, 1800 pound marks to bid because it's only going to be a 3295 car. It sounds a, a, a lot of car for little money, but it's, again, it's the mileage into it, I suppose. And then at 1800, 1700 quid, that sort of territory, I'll be happy. Um, if I don't think they'll take it to be honest I think they've probably got ideas it's worth two and a half grand or something they probably think it's worth four grand um, which it isn't but we'll see we'll see what they say you never know um, and then if we win it at that sort of money 
we can decide if we're going to retail it or not. We're going to take that Campbell. I mean, if we did, we'd have to make sure we, I don't know, we'd have to change the oil on it. Might even take the sump off and just get, you know, give us to make sure there's no mix of grime and shit and crap in there that go wrong. And I don't know. Do we just tread on as it is? I don't know. But that sort of money doesn't matter. You know, we we can we can dispose of this, whether retail it or trade it on and make some profit out of it. So uh, we'll see. But I, I don't think they'll take that bid on that. I think they might go for the Picasso bid, but I don't think they'll go for that. Dealers up the chain, usually when you see stuff like this, they think that they sort of like they're on the verge themselves of doing something with it. So when they want to trade them on, they usually have grand ideas of how much stuff's worth. And in reality, it isn't worth that because, you know, we don't buy this stuff all the time and go to the auction. So I know what this stuff's worth. We'll see what they say. Let's get back. Oh, two keys as well. I've got to mention that as a bonus. That's got a bit of service history as well, actually. Anyway, fire up. Let's get back. No tire light on there, look. But yeah, sounds all right. Right. We'll get back and put the bids in. All oh, right. So how do we get on? Well, the cars are back been in the old uh, dealer's office well room and um put the bids in sort of uh move the bids around slightly so i was going to ask put about 1800 quid in for the fiesta 500 quid for the picasso um but i thought to be honest i'd probably be a bit short on the fiesta so i just changed them around a bit so I put 450 in for the picasso and 1850 for the fiesta so, so it looks like i'm giving more for the fiesta uh they were sort of thinking more 22 from what i could gather um and in fairness, that's what he's booking at cap. It's booking at trade about 2,200 quid. I rang a mate of mine just to get a price on it because my phone's signal's a bit shit around here. Uh, so I couldn't get my HPI up. The bottom book on it was about 21. Um, and but the retail was saying it was four grand, but it isn't four grand retail. I had a look within 60 mile radius of that Fiat and Fiestas, and there's 125 petrols, there's 1516 diesels, 1314 plates for that sort of money, 3295, 3495 sort of territory. So that's really where I see that car at 32, 33, 95. But a message. Um, so I was just being honest and said, look, it's a one litre eco boom. Um, I, I'm going to retail it. I need margin in it because if something goes wrong, you know the score. I mean, they know, they deal with them all the time. So then they know what the score is with them. And I'm going to want to try and spend a bit of money on it. I'm going to have to do something to ever put a belt on it or clean the sump out. Or, or, so I'll do something. I'll have to work with some guys, see what we can do, a bit of prevention on it. Um, but then, and it wanted an axle bush as well because I could hear it on the back, very common of Fiestas, uh, just bits like that. So I needed a bit more in it, really. I'm not trying to be greedy, but there's going to be three or four hundred quid spent on it, and it's probably about a grand in it. Um, and you'll need that because if it goes boom, cost you more than that to fix. So I'm not saying it will do that, it may be fine. It's done 117,000 miles, it may be the original engine, it may be, it's a good one. But I, you hear so many bad stories, and I've seen so many issues with them and dealt with them that. I just know to be a little bit wary of that. So we'll see what happens anyway. The Picasso, 450 quid, it is what it is. If it stands me at that, I'm happy. I've just stick that into another trader or maybe stick into the block somewhere into the auction. There's money in that. I'm not, I'm not fussed about it. I suspect we'll get a call back on the Citroen, not the Fiesta. Anyway, that's enough of that. We've done it. We've, we've done a deed. We've been in. We've put the bids in. That's all we can do. Just wait to see it get a call. Let's get ourselves down now. Finish this day off. Get these signs picked up in the back of the old Mondingo for the new premises uh, and then hopefully by then we might have had a response back on these cars so let's get ourselves down there and pick these new signs up oh, right signs are in um turn them over so you can't see them but we're in just fitting and these are the two main signs we've got a couple of others that are coming next week but these are the main ones that i wanted for the pitch so i'm glad i got them in um i had to uh take the Mondeo back and uh, go and nick the Weiss Range Rover because I measured the Mondeo and realised oh. these signs weren't going to fit in there so I've had to get this old monstrosity which he's not very happy about and she says you can borrow the car she says, make sure you clean it for me and put some fuel in and yeah, oh yeah brilliant yeah we'll do that for you we've got the signs picked up we're going to get them dropped off now uh, we've had a bit of a development as well actually I've had a call the uh, dealer around me back basically wanted 2500 quid for the pair I offered 23, so I offered, what, 18 and 400, 1850 and 450 I would have offered, didn't I? Uh, and basically we've split the difference. So I've got offered 19 for the Fiesta and 500 for the Picasso. So we're at 2400 quid. Um, what I'm gonna do with them, I don't know. I'll get the Fiesta back first, see what I'm gonna do with that, because I might retail it, might not. 
probably won't if i'm honest with you but we'll see i might change your mind uh, like i say just that engine's a bit scary but we'll go a proper run on it and we can judge it from there uh but there's money in it without shadow of a doubt and then the other one's picasso i'll probably just i've got a trader lined up for that potentially anyway and um, maybe we can make a quick 100 quid 150 quid on it that'll do me or if not we'll just sling it in an auction but we'll get them picked up tomorrow um and then uh, start and probably film one of them and get the other floated off to auction so a good deal i'm quite happy with that really so all in all it's been quite a productive day i've got quite a lot done i so said we've got these signs dropped off now and i think they will call it a day to be fair it's getting quite late now so just one last shout out to uh, DYU Bikes. Uh, if anyone's interested in one of those electric bikes, please check out the link in the description. Like I said, there's a promo code in there. So you said the promo code's in there, so do check them out. Uh, thank you for watching this one, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you all in my next video.